One of the things that helps us understand ethical behavior and organization is cultural differences due to generational differences. What I'd like to do in this video is to discuss the struggles of Generation Z. Generation Z is the generation of students that are currently in college and are young uh, grad students. They're born after 1995. And this Generation Z seems to be very different from uh, the previous generation, Millennials, especially because of the role of technology. In around 2011, smartphones became the norm in America. The majority of American high schools had smartphones, especially iPhones, and that was right when the generation, students born in 1995, were in the middle of high school, and so they are the first generation continuously connected electronically to the web and to each other um, uh, that's, that's ever existed. And so this, uh, uh, now that this generation is starting to grow up, we've been able to notice other differences. One of the big differences are, are higher rates of depression and suicide in this generation compared to previous generations. And another big difference is lower levels of life satisfaction than previous generations at that, at that age. People just aren't as happy as they used to be. The depression is higher, more people are committing suicide, they're less satisfied with their uh, life, and we've got a whole generation coming into adulthood that is uh, uh, struggling with these things. Now, certainly not everybody that's Generation Z is going to be struggling with these these issues. It's just that a higher percentage of young people of this generation are struggling with these issues than young people of previous generations. One of the uh, causes appears to be social media, and this cause especially affects females. Social media doesn't have too much of an effect on uh, 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 males. Um, but part of the reason that social media is reducing life satisfaction in females is because people are spending more time on their iPhone and less time in face-to-face -face interaction developing uh, real relationships. And spending time on social media like Instagram, a phenomena occurs called upward social comparison, where people are following the world's most physically attractive and interesting people. And they're continually seeing what these beautiful people are, are doing. And we innately compare our lives with their lives. And so a teenage girl that's bombarded with happy, beautiful people doing fun things with other happy and beautiful people compares her life with the life that she sees on the screen and it's pretty disappointing. Before social media, people would form relationships within some peer group, maybe like in a, a church group or something like that, where there'd be maybe 50 people that they would know. And within that 50 people, there would be a whole range and most everybody could find their, uh, uh, their social position. However, when people saturate themselves in social media and follow only the most beautiful and interesting people, there's no way in the world that most people are going to uh, attain the, the goals that they set for themselves when they watch uh, this. Another issue with social media is that impulsivity and unbounded liberty, especially sensual or sexual life, uh, uh, liberty, are emphasized rather than self-discipline and conscientiousness. Um, and that can have some major uh, effects in organizations because when you hire somebody, you don't want somebody that's cons impulsive with unbounded liberty. You want somebody that has a lot of uh, self-discipline and is highly conscientious, and that's how organizations can, can fit well together. So social media is one of the big influences uh, uh, affecting Generation Z. A second set of issues that Generation Z has to deal with is online addictions, especially due to video games and pornography. 
And these addictions especially affect males. By playing games or viewing pornography, it meets their achievement, social, and stimulation needs. They don't really need to go out and develop real relationships. And uh, they don't need to go out and achieve real uh, uh, goals in life. They, they can do it all online. And so this tends to limit uh, productive and healthy, uh, uh, tends to limit productive work and healthy face-to-face -face, uh, relationships for people who are uh, addicted. And we see this in, uh, uh, in, in several different ways. One way is that we, we see that, that males are far less interested in forming uh, relationships with females nowadays because it's just so much easier for to to give oneself over to uh, online uh, uh, addictions, and at the same time, there's lots of people that don't have a lot of financial and professional goals because they're more concerned about their uh, um, uh, advancing on, on on video games, and so they're entering the workforce much later uh, than uh, uh, previous generations. So that's a second struggle that many people in Generation Z have to deal with. And a third set of struggles has to do with fragility from overprotection. Overprote Generation Z has been raised with a high emphasis on safety and risk reduction. We see this in the form of a helicopter parenting, where uh, the parents of Generation Z were really concerned about let, making sure that children had little unstructured free time. They didn't go out and, and, and play without a, a supervision because everything was considered so uh, dangerous uh, outside. Um, another source of, uh, of fear that causes people to put an emphasis on safety and uh, risk reduction is the ability to gain one's news from online sources, whether it be social media or Google News, any place where you get to choose where you click. Um, we know that people would are much more likely to click on a headline that causes fear or anger than on something that is good news or something that is intellectually stimulating. For example, if there are two headlines, one discusses the the the, the nature of a proposed peace agreement between Israel and Palestine and what would be expected from both sides and what both sides could uh, gain from having such a peace treaty. And then there's another headline that says that a meteorite is going to pass close to the earth. Almost everybody's going to click on the meteorite because that sounds scary. The uh, uh, finding out about the uh, uh, proposed Israeli-Palestinian uh, peace treaty does not sound scary. Um, it doesn't uh, seem to affect us uh, directly, but from an objective point of view, it is probably far more important than um, some uh, obscure meteorite that's going to pass a uh, half million miles away from the, uh, uh, the Earth. Another issue that uh, uh, causes a uh, that, that promotes fragility among uh, Generation Z is the call-out culture, especially online, where people will insult and attack anyone who has a point of view that, that differs from them. So what this does is it causes people to want to avoid discussing controversial content. This is what's known in organizations as the mum effect, the hesitancy to share bad news. Um, this has always existed, and that's one of the reasons that, that supervisors often don't learn about problems is because workers don't want to share bad news with their supervisor, fearing that they're going to get uh, punished or criticized for it. And now we've got the mum effect going on in, in all areas of uh, society. One of the uh, more interesting uh, uh, phenomena associated with is that, and this especially affects me since I'm a college professor, is that... Um, uh, uh, college professors tend to avoid discussing controversial uh, uh, topics, especially controversial topics that emphasize personal responsibility, because students so much uh, re can respond against this idea that, oh, people need to be personally responsible for their uh, 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 behavior. 
and uh, so so it, it's interesting with uh, um, in the last 20 years or so or 10 years uh, most colleges uh, with the goal of increasing student retention, have a system eva of evaluation at the end of the semester where students get to evaluate their professors. And these evaluations are often used for salary and for promotion. And so um, professors are motivated to say absolutely nothing that's going to offend or shock uh, uh, other students or um, do anything that will uh, upset them. And so one of the things that many people do is they avoid discussing the idea of personal responsibility, but they encourage the idea of, of feeling like a, a, a victim and expressing sympathy for, for people who uh, um, uh, uh, can blame poor social outcomes on being a victim rather than uh, uh, encourage them to take personal responsibility for the outcomes of their life. So all of these things are, are things that contribute to Generation Z's uh, struggles and are making it difficult for Generation Z simply to live life, to finish school, to get jobs, to, uh, um, to, to integrate into society. And as we seek to help organizations uh, move into the future, we need to be aware of these struggles that Generation Z uh, encounters so that we can be supportive and deal with people where they're at. <laughs>